Greetings in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, our Comforter and Guide. Welcome to this service of worship of the First Presbyterian Church in Mount Pleasant, Texas. I'm John Coleman, your liturgist today. With me are Reed Williams and Dr. Paul Wilhite, the Reverend Mark Davenport, who will be bringing our message on mercy from Romans 11 today. We welcome you whenever and wherever you are watching. Please know that we are praying for you during this time of uncertainty and confusion and every day seems like brand new chaos. We know that God is sovereign, God is over all, and if there is anything that we can do to help you during this time, please let us know of your need. The church's address and phone number is posted at the end of our service video today. Uh, well, we still don't have a firm date yet for regathering and worship here, but that's okay. We continue to follow very closely the directives and the advice of uh, the CDC, the state officials, our local and community officials, our church leadership, and our own Grace Presbytery. Uh, the session has met. We are still considering uh, different options and certainly the proper timing coupled with the maximum safety for our members and our guests. So we will keep you informed in every way possible as we move forward uh, into making some, some decisions in those areas. We do remain thankful for those of you who are remaining faithful in your giving. Uh, that helps us continue the ministry of the church in our community and beyond. So once again, if you have a need that we can help you with, please be sure and let us know. So here we are. We are here. You are there. But the Spirit of the living God is with us all. So let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship.
Our best intentions sometimes go astray. God calls us to a place of mercy. So let us bring the wounds of our common life to this time in confession and let us confess our sin. Forgive us, O oh God, for the sin we recognize in ourselves and for the sin we do not see. Show us how we have hurt one another. Reveal our disobedience to you and keep us from leading others into our sin. We seek your mercy and pray your help so we can put aside all actions and comments that bring pain. Cleanse us and make us whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Having confessed as a community of faith together, let us now confess individually in silence. God is eager to forgive and is abounding with mercy. Believe the good news. In Christ we are forgiven. Amen. sermon, we have three more Sundays where Paul's letter to the Roman church is the focus for our worship, and um, we have reached a place in Romans where Paul is wrapping up some of his conversation and some of his discussions about how God has continued to chase and redeem Israel and indeed all of the world. 
And we will soon be moving into uh, Paul's admonitions to us about our response to uh, a God who would chase after us. And so um, we look forward to the next three Sundays, uh, including this Sunday, as we wrap up our summer journey through Paul's letter to the Roman church. Let us pray. Giving thanks to you, O oh God, for the gift of your word, we open your word to read and to proclaim it. We know that the word we read today and the word that is proclaimed today are inspired by your spirit, the same spirit which lives in all of us and the same spirit which first caused these words to be written. We pray that that spirit would bring them to life in our hearts and in our minds. So, we pray, silence in us every voice except your own, that by hearing we believe, and that by believing we are your servants. Through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord, we pray. Amen. From Paul's letter to the Roman church in chapter 11, we will read uh, verse 1 and the first part of verse 2, and then we will conclude our reading beginning at verse 29. Hear the word of the Lord. I ask then, has God rejected God's own people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgment and how unscrutable are God's ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him to receive a gift in return? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To God be the glory forever. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. We hardly understand the power of the word mercy. Maybe that's because we have tossed it aside in our word bin. We have relegated it to the mundane where more likely to run across it in the name of a hospital than we are about anything else. In the biggest city near where I grew up in Fort Smith, Arkansas, we had a hospital like that. It was St. Edward Mercy Hospital. But the mercy part of that name didn't get used too much. It was just St. Edward's. We forgot about the mercy part. Occasionally, 
we'll toss the word into our conversations, but seldom give it the place it deserves. We might say something like, well, mercy sakes alive. I don't even know why we say that. I don't even really know what that means. But my grandmother would say it every now and then when she saw something on the news that she couldn't believe that she was seeing. I guess that was about the same thing as that expression that seems to come from a deeper concern or at least plead to a higher power, maybe used when we see someone that we love suffering through something unspeakable. Somebody might shake their head and give particular emphasis as they say, Lord, Lord, have mercy. You probably know that some states have adopted this mercy language into their high school football rules. At the end of the third quarter, if one team is ahead by so many points, I don't know how many points, every state probably decides that on their own, but if one of the teams gets ahead by that far, they don't stop the clock anymore. They just let it run and run and run. It's called the mercy rule. And that's about where we end with mercy. We've let it slip away. <clears throat> Become something not nearly as rich as it ought to be dismissed it into the far reaches of our minds. And we've settled for involvement in each other's lives that is not as deep. Or we've just decided that mercy is too costly. Too hard to hand out. Makes us appear soft. Weak. Mercy, some say, some might say, is for losers. We had rather deal in the land of justice. Now that's got some meat on its bone. And we're pretty good at handing it out. We see on a news report that a criminal gets sentenced to death for a life that they have taken and we join right up. People will say, well, they just got what they deserved. It's a pretty common way to think about justice. And with that justice being taken care of, we can dismiss those people who get our justice to the back of our minds too. Our own kids sometimes hear us say those same words. You know, they do something without thinking the consequences through, and they have to swallow a good-sized portion of consequences, and we're likely to tell them, well, you know, you, you do something stupid, you pay the price. What was it that Alabama philosopher Mrs. Gump said? According to Forrest, it was, stupid is as stupid does. That's justice talk. We like that kind of talk. We like justice. We like talking about it. like preaching about it to others. It makes sense to us, to our more legally turned minds, to our hearts and lives that are fairly incapable of not accepting people as they are for who they are, especially when they aren't like us. Justice is on the winning side. Mercy, well, it's kind of soft and frilly. Speak about it in hushed tones and just quietly let the clock run. No telling who might show up on our doorstep if the word gets out. Mercy is being handed. You have to be careful with that kind of talk. Shh, shh, quiet. Speak softly when you say mercy. Not Paul. Not Paul. He roared about mercy. Raved about it. Wouldn't let it slip quietly into anyone's good night and certainly blew apart any notion that mercy was for losers. Or that being merciful meant being a failure. 
It's how the 11th chapter of Romans is opened. And like most of the openings in Romans, you have to remember what has just been written. Paul has written that Israel, the chosen people, was slow to respond to God's mercy shown in the person of Jesus. They had turned blind eyes and deaf ears to God's mercy. So the appearance was that all of that mercy had failed. Now, it's not written in the book anywhere, but what do you bet somewhere somebody might have said to Paul, see, it's what all that mercy stuff gets you, nothing. God would have come down here and slapped a few people around, put some punk knots on some people's heads. You know, give people what they deserve. People would have seen, people would have sat straight up and listened to that. Nobody hears mercy. It's too quiet. It's too peaceful. Folks want action. And Paul is ready, ready to defend what he has come to understand as God's triumphant revelation of mercy in Jesus Christ. Remember, Paul's words in the 8th chapter, it's, it's always that 8th chapter coming back to haunt us or to restore us. All things work toward good. In everything, God is at work to bring good and good is all about the salvation and restoration of God's relationship to people and the creation. And Paul's words that open the text we read today are these. Does all this failure to see God mean that God's mercy has failed? By no means. Quite the contrary. God uses failure to bring victory. What Israel didn't see as they retreated to the law and to the confines of their traditions was the freedom that their rejection ushered into the Gentile nations. And when mercy was pushed aside by one, God used that to make mercy visible to another. And as that mercy is seen in the lives of those outside the law, those inside the law will be drawn to receive, to rediscover what they missed the first time around. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable our God's judgment and how inscrutable God's ways. God is not going to fail. Mercy will prevail. There is nothing quite like this extravagant generosity of God. And we know, we know that's the way God is. God has to be that way to continue in relationship with us because that relationship would be non-existent if it was built on justice and not mercy. I learned that early on from my parents. My brother and I broke the first color TV my parents ever owned. We were wrestling in the floor. We threw, I don't know how many baseballs through, I don't know how many window panes. We kicked a hole in the door that led from the living room to the bedrooms. We knocked holes in the sheetrock walls. And we were never cast aside, never thrown away. And we never ever really got what we deserve. Not once. Always got more than we deserve. Hot food. Home cooked. Warm bed. New clothes. Unconditional love. Holes got patched, new window panes bought, and after a while, a new TV even happened. 
it all happened rather quietly, without any big to do. You might say in a whisper. But that whisper echoes in the recesses of my mind. Mercy. 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 It gives me pause from time to time to consider who I am. Not as good as I want at times. Okay at others. You probably know what I mean. Mercy is an important part of the puzzle as we claim to be God's people. To be merciful is to be godly. A 16th century Spanish writer, Miguel de Cervantes, wrote these words, Among the attributes of God, although they are equal, mercy shines with even more brilliance than justice. Mr. Webster just says of mercy, It is more kindness than justice requires. Kindness beyond what can be expected. And the poet and hymnist Frederick William Faber writes, and we just sang, There's a wideness in God's mercy, like the wideness of the sea. There's a kindness in God's justice, which is more than liberty. For the love of God is broader than the measure of the human mind and the heart of the eternal is most wonderfully kind. God has claimed us through mercy. That's who we are. We are people who have life because of mercy. And if it's been given to us by God, then it's up to us to spread it around. And you don't have to be quiet about it. Or ashamed that mercy is what you're passing out. Give mercy away. And trust God with the outcome. And as you're doing that, should someone ask, what are you doing? Why are you doing this? Just tell them. It's okay to tell them. I'm just handing out mercy. I have more than I need, more than I deserve. If we really want to make a difference in this community, in the lives of the people in this community, mercy. Being a people of mercy. is a good place to start. Just show people that. Tell people that. Thanks be to God for the gift of mercy. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, In response to the hearing, the understanding, and the living, living out of God's holy word, let us together affirm our faith. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, we give thanks for all of the gifts that we enjoy that have come through your spirit. None more so than the mercy you pour out on us every day. Our prayer is that we would be people of mercy. That we would find it within us because you have gifted to us in Jesus the courage to be kind and gentle and forgiving and understanding to be people who see and who hear the cries and the needs of those who are around us. We pray, O oh God, for continued mercy that we might learn how to give it away. You have called us to this place and this time, and you have gifted us with the gifts of your Spirit. And we are gathered in the power of that Spirit. Though we are separated, we still feel those bonds of unity and that oneness of our faith community. We pray for your blessings to continue to fall upon us that we might be a blessing to others. We lift up to you this day, O oh God, all who are hurting and sick, all who are lonely and hungry, all who feel as though they have been pushed aside. We pray, O oh God, that we would be servants to you by being servants to them. That we would find love growing in our hearts and understanding growing in our minds. We lift up to you today, O oh God, the leaders of our nation, asking you to grant them wisdom and understanding and empathy. We pray for the leaders of the world. We seek peace and we seek harmony. And we know these things begin and end with faithful response to you.
So grant us our prayer that we may serve you as we give our love to those who are around us. Bless this particular church and all churches that we may be people of your spirit and that we may proclaim in our words and with our deeds the good news of the kingdom of Jesus Christ who has taught us to pray saying our Father who is in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen from this time of worship go into your time of work and of family and of play and of leisure taking with you all of the gifts that God has given to you and distributing them to the people that you meet. Do all of this out of love. It is the gift that binds everything together in perfect harmony. And as you go, may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you and yours now and forever. Amen. Amen.